So if you recognise this face, you will know that we have just bumped into a legend in the game. So Jacob has worked, I think it's, it's 16? 16, 16, 18, 18 years. 18 years he has worked in this company and he still has passion from the day he started. He literally, you spend two minutes with this guy and you are infected. Anyway, he's going to take us through the remote controls and he's going to give us a rundown. Jacob, take over my friend. Y'all, if you've been with Control 4, if you've used Control 4, this is the culmination. This is where it all ends up. We've got the Halo remote. We'll end up replacing the SR260. We'll still have that one for a while, but this one is a lot better. It feels great. It's got all the buttons that are backlit, backlit buttons, and some of them that are missing aren't actually missing. Red, green, yellow, blue are just hidden, so we're not wasting space. And the con red control four, not missing. There's the red four, but it doesn't do the on-screen. Customers didn't understand red four for the menu on the TV. So we've got a TV menu button and we've got the home, which brings up the menu on the screen itself. With the Neo, you had a hard time knowing if you moved off the circle to the channel up and down, volume up and down. 1.5 millimeter difference, so you can feel if you're on the D-pad or not and a brand new UI built just for Halo. These are digital labels for the custom buttons so you can remember what the buttons do. And then there's the touch. This is the pretty one. It's got a lock screen, so if you pick it up, you don't hit a button. Lock screen that you can dismiss and then you can swipe between your favorites and the same menu that you had on the Halo does not have all the buttons because we can put red, green, yellow, blue up here. All the number buttons up here. So depending on your use case, touch or non-touch, it's built specifically for that use case. Aluminum, and it feels like it. Comes in silver, comes in black, and the halo itself is just in black, but it's a plastic case, plastic chassis. However, most customers holding it can't tell. So they feel like they belong in the same family. They look like they belong in the same family. A little hump in the back where you put your fingers, keeps your fingers over the same buttons. So no matter which remote you're holding, you're always over the D-pad. Three to five times better Wi-Fi than the Neo. Lots of testing. Lots to get it right. Yeah, it's a and longer battery life as well. They both use the same dock, so you can dock them interchangeably. And the voice, find the Mandalorian. Find the boys. Find Beyonce. Find Avatar. With this noise going on. So, coming to you soon. They are fantastic. And being Control 4 for 18 years, oh, I'm so proud of our babies. Real proud. Legend, perfect. Thank you very much, Jacob. I just backed that up. They really are, though, because that's the difference. You know, we've been doing C4 for five years, and as much as I love the SR260, probably important to point out, what you've done on this remote to make it easy for customers to transition, the buttons are pretty much identical as you move across the range. Yep. Um, and this, with the touch compared to the Neo, the Neo, well, was the Neo, we'll move on. <laughs> we'll move on, we'll move we on. We did too, it, we moved yeah, on. It, it was a stopgap, they plugged the gap. But one thing I will say, because Jacob as well, is so active in the forums, so active. Like, he is in the trenches with the guys. He's, he isn't corporate and, and hid behind the wall. He is in there every day, coming into guys. And when obviously the Neo went down, because people wanted the new remote, they brought the new remote out. It was a stopgap, whilst this was in development. And when people said, and in fact, if anything, the Neo was actually a blessing because giving people the, ble the Neo, they thank God, I don't like this, I don't like this, I like this, put this one from the SR260. And as a community, people have designed the perfect remote. When I say it's the perfect remote, 
it really is the perfect remote. Everything, button size, feel. Like you say, that, that part there in the middle where it, it just weighted well, it's balanced well. And the screen, the screen is responsive. You can see as I'm coming through it, there's no lag. And if you look at the networks at ISC, the SSID, so how noisy this, this space is and the spectrum at the minute, it's crazy. And it's not affecting this remote control. So now you finally have a universal remote control. Yeah, and especially with um, obviously the stuff that Snap have got going on with Josh. So stateside, <laughs> yeah. stateside Josh is on the list. Depending on your currently selected device in the future, this will do whatever box you're controlling. But if you're not watching anything, it'll use your pre-selected voice assistant. So in the future, it would do Alexa or Google or stateside could do Josh AI. And all that's in development, plus other features y'all ain't even ready for. That is, that, that, there's been a lot of stuff at the show that has shocked me this year, which is, especially the new Luma X20. When I've seen the Luma X20, because it's obviously Luma again, it was, oh, Luma. When no. I've seen the Luma X20, I was like, wow, wow. Scrapped, started all over again. Yeah, yeah. And this, we didn't have to scrap. This we is had designed from SR260, the SR260, which was the most functional remote you've ever used. We had the Neo, which was beautiful, especially the red one. Red one, beautiful, but it wasn't fully functional. So we were able to marry the two and get the perfect universal Literally remote. Literally the perfect. Wicked. Top man, thanks again, Jacob. No problem. Legend. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Cheers.